What really happened to Geronimo, the fearless Apache warrior? His story began when European settlers aggressively invaded Native American territories, displacing and decimating tribes in their path. Among these tribes were the Apaches, who never accepted submission and maintained a tense relationship with the settlers, first with the Spanish, then with the Mexicans, and finally, with the Americans. As conflicts grew, retaliations became brutally violent on both sides, with attacks that spared neither warriors nor civilians, including women, elders, and children. Amid this chaos, Geronimo emerged as a fierce leader driven by freedom. His relentless thirst for justice and cunning led him to become an unparalleled strategist, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the Apache Wars. In this video, discover Geronimo's life, his rise as a leader and healer, and his place in history as the last native leader to formally surrender to the U.S. government. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to discover more impactful stories on our channel. Geronimo, born in June 1829 under the Apache name, the one who yawns, grew up in the canyons of what is now the border between Arizona and New Mexico. He was the fourth of eight children, raised in the traditions of the Chiricahua Apaches from the Bedoncohe tribe. From a young age he helped his family grow corn, beans and squash, and displayed a great talent for hunting. At 17, attained warrior status, and shortly after married Elope, a young woman from a sister tribe, after offering horses as a dowry to her father. He lived a few years in peace with his wife and children, leading successful raids and defending his people from invaders. However, in 1851, his life changed tragically. During the absence of the Bedoncoe warriors, around 400 Mexican soldiers led by Colonel Jose Maria Carrasco attacked his camp, massacring the elders, women and children, and destroying everything. Among the victims were his mother, wife and children, who returned to find their camp in ashes. This event ignited in Geronimo an insatiable thirst for freedom, which would make him one of the most feared and remembered warriors of his time. Devastated by the loss of his family, Geronimo performed the funeral rites and retreated into the desert, where, according to legend, he heard a voice promising him protection and aid in his quest for freedom. No gun will ever kill you. I will remove the bullets of the Mexicans and guide your arrows. This mystical prophecy, along with accounts from other Apaches claiming Geronimo could foresee events and heal, forged his reputation as a leader with supernatural abilities. After the massacre at Janos in 1851, Geronimo went from tribe to tribe seeking support for reprisals. Thanks to his charisma and thirst for freedom, he gathered a significant force and led the Apaches in bloody battles against the Mexicans. In one of these encounters, his fierce, zigzagging movements on the battlefield terrified his enemies so much that according to accounts they began shouting Geronimo as a plea to Saint Jerome, which became his famous nickname. Over time, Geronimo became a symbol of Apache resistance. However, the conflict did not remain solely with the Mexicans. When American settlers began migrating massively westward, drawn by the gold rush, they invaded Apache territories, further intensifying tensions. Geronimo led attacks against both Mexicans and Americans, ambushing stagecoaches and caravans that crossed his lands. Apache society began to split between those who tried to adapt to the reservation system and those like Geronimo who firmly opposed any agreement with the whites. Despite his father-in-law and warrior chief Cochise signing an agreement to settle on a reservation, the Americans broke the pact, unleashing Geronimo's fury, and he resumed his raids as a defiant act. Although his followers revered him as the last defender of the traditional Apache life, over time, Geronimo became a pariah, seen by some as an obstacle to peace. Nonetheless, his tenacity and courage turned him into a living legend, an unstoppable warrior who never accepted submission. Despite being revered as a symbol of the Apache struggle, not everyone saw Geronimo in the same light. Some Apaches considered him an inspiring leader, while others perceived him as a stubborn rebel whose thirst for freedom and hatred for the invaders endangered his own people. Geronimo was ultimately betrayed by Apache scouts who, in exchange for a reward, 
deceived the warrior with the promise of a peace meeting with a U.S. agent named John Clum. Unsuspecting, Geronimo and his followers attended the meeting where they were captured and chained. Instead of execution, they were sent to the feared San Carlos Reservation, an arid, hostile place known as the Forty Acres of Hell. There, Geronimo spent several years trying to adapt to this new life, though he turned to alcohol and caused minor incidents, rebelling against the environment to which he was confined. However, his indomitable spirit led him to a final escape in May 1885. Along with a group of followers, Geronimo fled San Carlos, intending to take refuge in Mexico driven by the desire to resume raids against his enemies. But after years of relentless pursuit, both Mexican and American forces managed to wear him down. The constant pressure and physical exhaustion eventually weakened both him and his followers. Finally, Geronimo was captured and although he never stopped resisting, he spent his last years as a prisoner of war, becoming a living legend. His story represents the bravery and sacrifice of those who fought for freedom to their last breath. By 1886, Geronimo and his warriors' attacks were relentless, impacting both civilians and other Native Americans. The mission to stop him fell to General George Crook, who, with the help of 100 Apache scouts in the U.S. Army, pursued Geronimo into Mexico and back to the United States. As they advanced, Geronimo was devastated to discover that some members of his own tribe collaborated in his capture. Finally, on September 4, 1886, Geronimo, exhausted and out of options, agreed to surrender on the condition that his people could return to their lands. However, General Crook was ordered to kill Geronimo if he resisted, and although the warrior was disheartened and showed no desire to resist, the surrender marked the end of the free Apache era. After his capture, Geronimo and his followers were relocated to various reservations Fort Pickens in Florida, then Mount Vernon in Alabama, and finally, Fort Sill in Oklahoma. In an attempt at re-education, the government separated Apache children from their families and sent them to the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Pennsylvania, where many died under inhumane conditions. During his years as a prisoner, Geronimo became a figure of fascination for the American public, who wanted to meet the legendary warrior. Capitalizing on this fame, Geronimo sold small personal items to those who offered him a good price, and attended fairs and exhibitions where he was presented as a savage Indian. He even met President Theodore Roosevelt whom he asked to allow his people to return to their lands, a request that was denied. Over time Geronimo began to live in a world between two cultures. He joined the Dutch Reformed Church in 1903, although he was later expelled. While he referred to himself as a Christian, he never abandoned his Apache beliefs, leading a spiritually ambivalent life. In his final years he admitted to feeling neither fully Apache nor fully American. However, his hatred toward the Mexicans persisted until the end, as he described them in his memoirs as treacherous and malicious. The End of Geronimo in 1909, an elderly and weary Geronimo was returning home intoxicated when he fell from his horse. He spent the entire night in the cold, which led to severe pneumonia that took his life on February 17th of that year. On his deathbed he confessed that he regretted surrendering, saying, I should never have surrendered. I should have fought until I was the last man alive. The Cry of Geronimo the cry of Geronimo became popular during World War II thanks to a paratrooper training unit in Fort Benning, Georgia, who sought to draw courage from the Apache warriors' bravery as they jumped into the void. His legacy endures in history as a symbol of resistance, rebellion, and the endless fight for freedom. Hello Time Voyagers friends! If you enjoyed the content, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue creating exciting videos. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We genuinely welcome your comments and love hearing your thoughts. A big hug to all our followers and a heartfelt thank you to our troops and officials for their invaluable support. We appreciate you being here.